we are gatekeepers of the home and the nation, relentless in prayer and intercession. Today I am living as a servant of the Lord. Every dust on your marital life, every dust on your marital destiny must not leave this place with you. I said you must not leave this place with you in the name of Jesus. Enterprising and creative, we are bold, daring, and full of faith. We are Daughters of Destiny. Time has come and now is when true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Can you just lift your voice in the spirit if you can? We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. That's who you are. Only you can do this thing. There is no one else like you. of your joy father we thank you for the privilege of being your daughters and your sons lord we thank you for this day that we are standing in your sanctuary we thank you for the awesome things in righteousness that you have done already we thank you for battles you have won for us we thank you for victories you have handed over to us we thank you for healing us time and time again we thank you for the spring on our steps we thank you for the promise of a better tomorrow we thank you for being you you are a god of integrity when you say a word you bring it to pass what a good god you are thank you lord for being our god today our hearts are open to receive from you eternal rock of ages we ask oh god release to us without measure let there be an overflowing of your spirit upon each and every one of us in the name of jesus help us to live here better than we came father lord take away every chaff from our lives take away every filthy garment from our lives in the name of jesus clothe us with rich robes let us leave your presence indeed like the daughters of the king and the sons of the king 
to you be all glory in Jesus mighty name we worship you amen can somebody say praise the Lord hallelujah you may be seated the Lord bless you in this church in Jesus name it is my prayer that every plan and purpose of God for us as a group, as a body, as a church, as a province, indeed, as the redeemed Christian church of God, we will achieve those things in Jesus' name. And I bring greetings from my husband. He said, I should greet you. And my children, I bring greetings from them as well. There is such an aura in this home in this house. I pray that will not live here. In the name of Jesus, you will all continue to dwell together in peace and unity and love and friendship. I feel an overflow of joy and the right word is ease, ease. There's an anointing of ease in this house. And that's where I'm going to start from and as I begin to prophesy into the life of somebody. There is something that you've been trying to do. It's been a protracted issue. Today I'm speaking into that situation that God who made the Red Sea to part, though there was a host of chariots pursuing the children of God. Today I speak ease into that situation. I prophesy ease in the name of Jesus. I prophesy ease in the name of Jesus. You see, Moses had the assignment to stretch the rod and God had the assignment to part the waters. Ezekiel had the assignment to prophesy to the dry bones. God had the power to make them come alive. When we release the prophetic word, you have a responsibility to receive it and you see them begin to happen. Again, I'm prophesying that difficult issue in your life in your marriage, in the lives of your husband, your children. It could be a business issue. It is a protracted issue. You have been on it for a long time. Today I am prophesying that the Lord will bring about an easy finish in the name of Jesus. I said there will be an easy finish in Jesus' mighty name. So the topic before me is recognizing the voice of the shepherd recognizing the voice of the shepherd. I want you to please follow me quickly because I'm not going to be teaching for long. We're going to do a lot of praying because I'm a woman of prayers. Recognizing the voice of the shepherd. And when I heard this topic, I was really, really impressed with the leadership of this church. Because more often than not, the kind of topics that most of us love Breakthrough, grab it, take it, expansion, increase. Those things are good, but when you hear some people having this as a theme, you will know that you're talking to matured Christians. So I see that as a sign of maturity, and I give you kudos for that. Can you please put your hands together for that? We must appreciate you desire to grow. That is what I'm hearing from the Spirit of God. Recognizing the voice of the shepherd. Two words jump, jump out straight from this topic. The voice and the shepherd. First, I'm going to go through this first teaching on the benefits of Jesus being a shepherd. Psalm 23 verse 1, he says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Psalm 23 introduces God as the shepherd. Now, the duty of the shepherd is to keep and to feed the sheep, to protect, to nurture, and ensure they grow and multiply. I am prophesying to somebody here, as long as you submit yourself to be shepherded by Jesus, he will keep you. He will keep your marriage. He will keep your children. You may be in Nigeria, they may be in America. God will keep them. The tsunami of the world will not take them away. In the name of Jesus. So the first thing is that the shepherd has the responsibility to keep, to protect, to nurture. 
The second benefit of the shepherd can be seen in that same Psalm 23 verse 2. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He maketh me. He maketh me. For me to enjoy the benefits of the green pastures. We know what the green pastures are. The green pastures provide food for the sheep because the sheep eats grass. It means that the green pastures is a place that is well watered. It is a place of provision. For me to enjoy the green pastures, God will make me do some things. I must be ready to obey the shepherd's instruction. He maketh me. Some of us make our children to do some things, right or wrong. Some of those things are not pleasant. You make them brush their teeth very well. You make them make their room, tidy their room. You make them do homework, right or wrong. So there are some things that God will make you and I to do. <laughs> because he wants us to partake of the green pastures. And many times we may not know what God is making us to do at that time. Are we together? So God makes us to go through some things which may not be palatable, but those things help to build capacity in us. We make our children study so that they can be successful, right or wrong. So if you want to hear the shepherd's voice, you must know that there are things that he will make you to do, <laughs> which ordinarily at the beginning, you may not know where he's leading you, but if you're careful enough to be obedient, and not resist the making of the shepherd, there will be a good turnout. Still in that verse, we see the third benefit. He leadeth, Psalm 23 verse 2. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. When I was meditating on this, if God is leading you beside the still waters, notice when you get to the bad beach, if you are blind, you will feel the rush of the waters, right? Either you hear the waves or you feel the, the atmosphere that it's wet. But this is still waters. Still waters is so still, yet very deep. And God sometimes leads us through some terrains that if we should step out of line, it could be dangerous. But because we've got the shepherd, even though when we go through those terrible things, or maybe you have an assignment ahead of you that you are afraid of, God is beside you. You will not fall. You will not fail. In the name of Jesus. He says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. When God is leading you, we must be ready to be led. <laughs> when God is leading you, you must be ready to obey and not run ahead of God. Many times in life, some of us start with God, but somewhere along the line, we run ahead. Sometimes you're in the middle of a situation and you ask, God told me to do this thing. Why is it not working? I dare say there are some of you believing God for life partner and God will tell you this is your husband and the minute you enter the marriage, halfway, you are wondering, ah, ah, did I hear God? Hello? You started a business and halfway you are wondering, did I hear God? No, you, you heard God, all right. Remember Peter, when, he was, when the sheep had gone afar and Jesus was walking on the water, it was Jesus that said, Peter, come. And as Peter started walking on the waters, as soon as he turned his gaze off Jesus, he began to sink. There are situations in life that, yes, God called you to do the thing, but halfway, you may face boisterous wind. So what is the solution? Keep looking. Tell your neighbor, keep looking. So when God leads us in the path of righteousness, his spirit will minister to us to shun sin. His spirit will minister to us to be good to others. We must yield ourselves. The spirit of God is the only one that can tell you not to take bribe. Right or wrong? It's only the spirit of God that will minister to you to go and apologize to somebody. That can only be the spirit of God. It's only the spirit of God that can show you those things inside of you which you will refuse to accept from somebody else. 
Like I tell people, everywhere I'm going to preach, the Spirit of God chastises me as a person. Before you carry the microphone, have you attended to this and that and that? Because the Bible says we teachers, we are subject to a stricter, a stricter regulation than the people we are teaching. And so, he says, he leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. We must not bring reproach to the name of the Lord. And so, when we are talking about the shepherd, we must understand the nature of having a shepherd or the benefits of having a shepherd. Number four, the fourth benefit. Jesus is the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. 1 Peter 2.25, 1 Peter 2.25, he said, For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your souls. It is my prayer, in any area of our lives we have gone astray, may we hear the voice of the shepherd. I say, may we hear the voice of the shepherd in the name of Jesus. A Yoruba proverb says, Ajatoba son. Meaning, the dog that wants to get lost. You know, the, the hunters used to take dogs in those days when they are going to hunt. Because the dogs help them sometimes to fish out some small rodents. But when the shepherd, I mean, the, the hunter is going, he will blow a whistle. So that the dog will know it's time to leave. But some dogs are very, very stubborn. And so when the hunter is blowing the whistle, they never hear. It is my prayer in any area of our lives where God is talking to us repeatedly, we will hear in Jesus' name. The fifth benefit is that the shepherd is a rewarder of the sheep. 1 Peter 5 verse 4. 1 Peter 5 verse 4. The shepherd is the rewarder of the sheep. And when the sheep shepherd appears you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. As many people who are careful to be under the shepherd, at the end we will be rewarded. You will not lose your reward in Jesus' name. Why is this necessary? Life is a journey. You know, when you belong to a house like this, some of you have been in the Redeemed Christian Church of God maybe for 20 years. That church has shaped your life if you're there with your husband, it's probably shaped your marriage. Your children have been shaped by the church. You take them to the children's church. Little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept, the church has groomed your life, groomed your family, groomed your home. We're all making a journey. It's grooming the way you do your business. It's grooming the way you relate to people. By the time you're in this ministry for 70 years, and maybe by 80 years, you go and be with the Lord. Because you have followed line upon line, precept upon precept, what the shepherd has been teaching you, at the end you will receive a reward. Do you believe that? That's why the church has a huge responsibility. The purpose of the church is threefold. And we must never miss it. Because now we're in the days where churches are looking for high numbers. Congregation. So we're doing all sorts of things to pull them. Let them just come. I want to have a church of 10,000. Then you will know I'm a big pastor. No. It's not about numbers. It's about health. The health of the church. What's the state of your members? Are they spirit filled? Do you disciple them? <laughs> Do you teach them the word? Do you check their lives? Oh, you can have a big cathedral. But the people there. Are they 419? What's their testimony? Are we getting it? The purpose of the church is threefold. It is to represent heaven on earth, to prepare people for heaven. That's why God created the church. The church in Ilogwe Kiti, where I come from, has the same assignment as the mega church I attend in Lagos. Did you hear that? The church in Ilogwe Kiti, where I come from, has the same assignment as the mega church that I attend in Lagos. So the mega church in Lagos may have 10,000 members. In Ilogwe Kiti, they may just be 50, but the pastor has the same assignment like the pastor of my mega church in Lagos. The church in Smyrna, in the book of Revelations, chapter number 2, Jesus was talking to John the Revelator, and he said, look at all of you in the church in Smyrna. You are complaining that you have a poor church. You are not poor. You are rich. But the church in Laodicea, in the same letter, 
Jesus said, those in Laodicea, this is a rich but complacent church. Money must not take the place of God in our lives. And so, when we submit ourselves to the guidance of the shepherd, a reward is waiting for us. Somebody say, I won't lose my reward. In the name of Jesus. So we said one of the, let's go through the benefits. The first benefit is that the shepherd protects, the shepherd provides, the shepherd nurtures, the shepherd ensures that the sheep grows and multiply. The second thing, Psalm 23 verse 2, the shepherd will make us to do some things, to lie down in green pastures, to lie down. Sometimes we want to run. He makes us to lie down so that we can achieve something great. The third benefit, he leads us. The shepherd leads the sheep. We must be ready to be led. Contrary to the way we feel, What's the word saying about marriage? Submit. What's the word saying about bringing up my children? So you and I must be ready to be led. There are many popular opinions about being a woman, for instance. And so we must be careful to know that the instructions we follow do not negate the word of God. Any woman who is in any marriage, we know that there are extremes. There are people who are beating their wives and we, we do not condone that. We do not support any man to beat any woman. But I can tell you that that is not the generality of what obtains in marriages. That's just, it's just uh, the exception, not the rule. What's the rule from the word of God? You and I are to submit to our husbands. That's the only way. We are to submit and our husbands are to love us like their own bodies. And when we are being loved and we are submitting, then marriages can work. That's the gospel. It can never go out of fashion. That's the word of God. It can never be outdated. And so, the fourth benefit is that the shepherd is the bishop of our soul. He's the overseer of our soul. The fifth is that the shepherd is our rewarder. God will reward somebody in Jesus' name. The sixth benefit is that the shepherd has a covenant with us. Jesus is my shepherd, not just because I come to church. We are in a covenant relationship. He shed his blood for me. So because he has shed his blood for me, I am entitled to some covenant benefits. Divine healing. I'm entitled to some covenant benefits. Divine provision. I am entitled to some things by virtue of the covenant. Let's see Hebrews 13 verse 20. Hebrews 13 verse 20. Now may the God of peace, who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through what? The blood of the everlasting covenant. We're going to plead that blood today. And that blood will speak for somebody in Jesus' name. So because you are in a covenant relationship with God, you can plead for mercy. You can plead for anything because you are in a blood covenant. Excuse me, marriage is a covenant. It's not an agreement. That's where a lot of people miss it. A man can divorce a woman in the law court, but in the court of God, there's nothing like that. You can stop only marrying wife two, wife three. No problem. One day you are going to stand before the shepherd. <laughs> and that's why many of us are careful. Many of us are careful because we are constrained by the word. We are constrained by the word. So when we have those issues in our marriage, we must know that it is not only about how we feel. And that's why you've got to bring in the provisions that God has given you when you have a problem. As a child of God, the shepherd has given you so many tools you can use. You've got the tool of prayer. It says the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. You've got the weapon of worship. You've got the weapon of praying in the Holy Ghost. You've got the weapon of pleading the blood of Jesus. And that's why we've got to be careful not to blaspheme those things. Those things are important. The name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, speaking in the Holy Ghost. Nobody jokes with that. 
We've got to be careful because the devil wants to water down the importance of these things. So when issues happen in our lives, if we do not use the weapons of our warfare, we begin to go and use the weapons of the flesh. For every problem we have, the shepherd has a solution. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? But if we're not diligent enough to go the way of the shepherd, then we, go, we get into problems. Reasons. Bring your strong reasons. So that matter in your life. Have you taken it to God? If you are fasting and praying alone and it's not working, get somebody to fast and pray with you. If two of you shall come together as touching anything, what did the shepherd say? He says, whatever you bind on earth, if you try, two of you, it's not working, call brethren to pray with you. Maybe God is telling you something. And so the shepherd, <laughs> the shepherd has a covenant relationship with me. Tell your neighbor, I have a covenant relationship. So I'm not afraid. Do you know that Mephibosheth benefited from the covenant relationship between his father and David? Do you know? The Bible says that Mephibosheth did not go to David. David sought him out. From the day they caught the covenant, Mephibosheth was entitled to that benefit. Please hear me again. It was not the day that David called Mephibosheth that Mephibosheth was entitled to the benefits. It was the day that David and Jonathan caught the covenant. I'm prophesying to somebody. The benefit you are supposed to have enjoyed, which you don't even know about. Mephibosheth never knew he was entitled to covenant protection, but his father had caught the covenant a long time ago. Today, any pending covenant in your life, let them come to life in the name of Jesus. I say, let them come to life. Let them come to life. Let them come to life in the name of Jesus. What am I talking about? Sometimes my children go to shop right. They come back and they say, Mom, somebody paid for us. I said, you are Pastor Busola's children. Don't pay. What is that? They are enjoying what? Benefits. Right? They don't know the person. But the person could have kept quiet and not do anything. There are some things you and I are supposed to be enjoying because of covenant. Some things that are our heritage, our entitlement by covenant. It is my prayer God will open our eyes in the name of Jesus. Number seven, Jesus is the good shepherd that protects us. John 10, 11. I want to move quickly so we can start to pray. He says, I am the good shepherd. Without the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. Without Jesus in your marriage, there will be problem. Without Jesus helping you with your teenagers, you have many forces to fight with. Internet. <laughs> Don't tell me you bring them to church. You. We all bring them to church. The forces out there, they are terrible. The children that we train up in the way of the world, you just send them abroad. There are some crazy professors that are ready to turn their way of thinking. They'll be teaching them about it, 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 it being an atheist. The forces out there, they are so terrible if you don't have God. So when some of these children come back with negative reports, who do you go back to? Shepherd. Then the shepherd will say, go to my word. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. You want more? You need to do to me. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Casting down every imagination in your heart. The child that was drumming in church, when he gets to America now, he wants to do dreadlocks. Hello, are you feeling me? He wants to do some things. <laughs> How many people have teenagers here? I have three of them, and they're all boys. Ijakadi, I was telling my husband. He said, that's why you're a strong woman. You think it's easy to have three boys. It is not that you have not done your part. If you don't have the hand of God in the life of your children, may our children not be used to canos. May the devil not make our Christianity a mockery through our children in the name of Jesus so without the shepherd the sheep will scatter having seen the many and very benefits of Jesus being a shepherd you can't afford to miss the voice I can't afford to miss the voice the voice of the shepherd is the only compass we have 
is the only link. Look at this. The sheep does not have any claws like the lion, right or wrong. So, the sheep does not have the teeth and uh, those fangs like a lion is not a predator. The, shep- the sheep is not a predator. So, it cannot hunt for animals, right or wrong. The sheep does not have horns. It cannot fight. In fact, the sheep only eats grass. If there is no grass, the sheep will die. So what am I saying? Total dependence on the shepherd. To fight the enemies and to protect. Lastly, what are the three dimensions of communication from God? We need to write this down because this is what we will pray for. The first dimension, revelation. Romans 1, 19 to 20. God can show you something in the future now so you can take advantage of it. Many people here under the sound of my voice. There are many things God has shown you. Did you write them down? What did you do about them? Somebody said God showed him such at water many, many years ago. Many, many years ago. Because in Lagos, before, if you wanted to drink water, some people used to carry the water in buckets. How many people are as old as me? Eh? You know by the bus stop, somebody will carry a bucket of water and a cup. How many people know what I'm talking about? If you want to drink water, you go to the person and they give you the water in a cup until the issue of sachet water came. Do you know how many people have been blessed? Second one. Many years ago, when I got married, you have to look for a fashionable auntie to dress up for you, right or wrong. <laughs> there was nothing called beauty industry until the Taras came along, right or wrong. There are niches yet unknown. It takes the voice of the shepherd. There are businesses people don't know, even as we speak, that he will reveal to somebody under the sound of my voice. Do you know some of the children we have, some internet-based businesses that we never knew about 30 years ago, and they're making millions from it, right or wrong? I'm prophesying over this house. Nobody used to buy soup in the supermarket before. Everybody used to go to the bank. But some people are now preparing soup and packaging it. I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice. May your inner eyes be open in the name of Jesus. I say may your inner eyes be open in the name of Jesus. May God give you insight. As he speaks to you, may you catch the picture. In the name of Jesus, may God give you far sight. I am prophesying to somebody. When you see a signboard, people may be seeing what was on the signboard. But may God show you the library of heaven. I say may God show you the library of heaven. In the name of Jesus, I am here to ignite somebody. To push somebody into her prophetic destiny. I am here to speak somebody into a prophetic realm that as you leave this meeting, realms unknown. Realms unknown. I say realms unknown. In the name of Jesus, I say realms unknown. Revelation. Revelatory gifts. God can speak to you by revelation. It can be for your ministry. It can be for your business. It can be for your career. If you catch the revelation, what does it do to you? It makes you go ahead of your peers. There are some people who have a trailblazer's anointing. Before people catch up with them, they've gone. I'm speaking to such to arise in this house. In the name of Jesus. The second way that the shepherd can speak is by inspiration. This is by the Holy Spirit influencing a man to reveal God's mind. Job 32 verse 8. He says, but there is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. God can inspire you by a certain word. God can inspire something inside of you. 
And when you follow it, things begin to happen. The third, illumination. The ability for you to understand revelations. Excuse me, sometimes some things are happening, but people don't understand. You were illuminated. You endured. Your endurance will come for certain things you're going through if you have understanding. You will back out of your marriage if you have understanding. You may not resign from that job if you have understanding. That what I'm going through right now I must not leave. You will not take a wrong action if you have understanding. And so, when God speaks to us and widens our understanding, then we will get a good outcome. Many channels of communication, audible voice, face to face. God can speak to you in a dream. God can speak to you through the word of God, the Bible. Second Timothy 3.16 God can give you a vision. You can be in a trance. It could be by angel like Zechariah and Mary. It can be through anointed messages and teachings. It can be through anointed counseling. When somebody counsels you, you get the mind of God. It can be through anointed music. 2 Kings 3 verse 15. How do you know that God is speaking to you? Don't go and marry an unbeliever and say you want to preach to him. Oh. Hello? That unbeliever that is toasting you now, singles, don't say when I marry him, it will change. Evangelism is different from obeying instructions. The way to confirm is that the voice of the shepherd must agree with the word of God. The voice of the shepherd, singles, hear it again. He told me he doesn't love his wife. It's none of your business. It's none of your business. Pray that God will give you your own husband. Don't go into that business. If you know that that business, the foundation is faulty. Don't say they are making it. It's a blessing. I will pay my tithe. Pampering people, we bring them to church. But we can't pamper them to heaven. We've got to preach holiness. It's not about numbers. The Bible says our works will be tried. A congregation of 50,000, when the fire of God touches it, it can reduce to five. May we not provide firewood for hell. Say I won't be firewood for hell. In the name of Jesus. So, the word of God. Any revelation, any prophecy they are giving you must agree with the word of God. We have seen some wicked people who have separated husbands and wives. So, be careful the word you get from people. Check it with the scriptures. Secondly, prophecy must have three characteristics. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3. It must exhort it must edify it must give comfort any prophecy they give you that is not making you afraid your heart is palpitating it's not of God and it must be a confirmation of what God has told you before because you too you have the Holy Ghost so whatever anybody is telling you there must be a confirmation number three the shepherd's voice must bring direction if we are confused and we, we come together to pray a voice will come out and give us direction so the shepherd's voice when it will not bring confusion, it will bring direction. Psalm 143, verse 10, write it down. Isaiah 42, verse 16. What do you do when you need divine direction? If you are in this house, you need God to direct you. Pray through. Continue to pray until you get an answer. The second thing you need to do be conscious of the presence of God. Number three. God's leading will not confuse you. God does not give people options. Can you write that down? God never gives people options. God gives instructions. <laughs> God will not say do this or that. Do you know, after Judas fell, the apostles gathered and by lot, they chose Matthias. Excuse me, after that day, did you hear about his name? Eh? What did Matthias do in the Bible? How many people did he preach to? Because they chose him by the way of men. And it seemed as if they were doing the right thing. But the 12 of them were chosen by Jesus after he prayed. So when we are taking decisions in church, we must follow the leading of God. We must not appoint people because they are giving money. Ask God. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So when God is leading you, 
Whatever God tells you, there will be peace. You must, the word of God, the voice of the shepherd gives a peace test. Peace, peace, peace. The person that wants to marry you that is slapping your face now, get ready. There's no peace there. Don't look at his jeep or his flat. They can't compensate. So what are the things that prevent us from hearing the shepherd's voice when we are not quiet enough, when we are too busy? Every child of God, you must have at least one day in the week that you wait on the Lord. Especially if you, now, you are now a servant of God. Some of you come here to preach. You come here to share the word. Before you carry this microphone, this is an altar as I'm speaking. Now, the words I'm speaking, they are spiritually backed up for activation. So for us to hear the shepherd's voice, we must be quiet. We must have times we go before God. Retreats. In your house, you can retreat. There are some places I'm going to preach. A conference I spoke on May 1st. I had to wait on the Lord seven days. The Lord locked me up in the house. So if you want to hear the voice of the shepherd, be quiet. Doubt. Don't doubt the voice of God. Some of you, God has told you to move. You are still doubting. Never wait for man to validate the instruction that God has given you. I'll say that again. Never wait for man to validate the instructions that God has given you. Fear. John 10, 27, which is the scripture for this conference, I believe. It says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. A follower is one who belongs. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. How many people want their voices, they are hearing to be activated today? Rise up on your feet. Let's talk to the Lord. Say, Father, I'm submitting myself as a sheep. I'm submitting myself as your sheep. Speak to me, O oh Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. And the very first instruction we need to hear from God. <laughs> and that was one of the things the Lord laid on my heart during the conference. In some of our churches, we don't take altar calls again. So if you don't invite people to come and receive Jesus, where are they going to receive Jesus? It is not whether they come out or not. Paul planted, Apollos watered, God gave the increase. You speak the word. They may not come out there. They may come out in the next meeting. So if you are here under the sound of my voice, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I'm not talking about going to church. The shepherd knows the people that are his. Maybe you were invited to this meeting and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Please, I need you to step out so that you can be a benefactor of the covenant blessing. The shepherd has a covenant relationship with us. Every head bowed. Quickly, quickly. I want to invite you. If you are here, you are not sure whether you are born again. Your age doesn't matter. Nobody's looking at you. Don't be ashamed. You need to come out quickly, quickly, quickly. Come and give your life to Jesus. Come and give your life to Jesus. Come and give your life to Jesus. Quickly, quickly, quickly. All over. Even if you are at the gallery, you need to step. Make a yes, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, my brother. There are yet more people here who need to give their life to Jesus. There are more people here. You might have been coming to church. If you have not given your life to Jesus, may we not be firewood for hell. <laughs> may we not be firewood for hell. You better come out. It's not a matter of attending church. You know there was never a time you have said, Jesus, come into my life. It doesn't matter your age. You may be young. Your mommy might have been bringing you to church. If you have never given your life to Jesus, though your mommy brings you to church, it's not enough. Children, you need to come and give your life to Jesus right now. God bless you. God bless you. There are yet more people. Don't be ashamed. Don't be bold. Children, if you're coming, come. Samuel was young when God called him. Come, 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 come. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. All over this auditorium. All over, all over, wherever you are seated. Keep coming. Come and give your life to Jesus. Jesus is calling you. Just begin to talk to the Lord as you are there. Say, Father, I have come to you, my shepherd. Receive me, O God. I'm going to give at least a few more calls. I believe there are people who are contemplating. It is only the voice of the devil that will tell you not to answer your shepherd. 
that voice telling you, you need to go out. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Marasata le broko shata yabaka sata. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. May the door of heaven not be shut against you. <laughs> They are going to show you the video of today. Nobody will say they have never heard the call of God. Is there somebody? You need to come and come on, come on, come and give your life to Jesus. You, every child needs to have his or her own salvation experience. Every child must have it. It's not a matter of coming to church with mommy or daddy. You've got to give your life to Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. God, talk to the Lord. Say, I have come to you, oh God. Every teenager that is here, hear the voice of God you've got to hear the voice of God there are many voices drowning you you need to come and give your life to Jesus he may not Father. thank you Lord put your right hand on your chest people of God stretch forth your hands towards them as young as they are they have started their journey say heavenly father I come to you today I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for my sins today I invite Jesus into my heart be my savior be my lord forgive me my sins oh God have mercy upon me I plead your precious blood to cleanse me write my name in the book of life thank you lord I declare I'm born again in Jesus mighty name the weapons that the shepherd has given us is his blood are we ready to use that blood are we ready to use that blood Revelation 12 11 Revelation 12 11 can we begin to talk to the Lord right now God is going to take away reproach right now right now God is going to take away limitations are we ready in this short few moments remaining and they overcame him by what? And they overcame him by the blood and what? The words of their testimony and uh, that's another message. But what do we want to do today? We want to use the instrument of the blood. As many under the sound of my voice, under any reproach, by the blood you'll be set free right now. I say you are going to be set free in the name of Jesus. Begin to thank God for the blood of Jesus. Thank God for the blood. 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 She said, Father, I thank you for shedding your blood. Thank God for the death of our Lord Jesus. Thank God for the victory at the cross. Thank God for the blood of Jesus. Ask the blood to cleanse you from every unrighteousness in your life, in your marriage, on your job. Say, Father, let your blood wash me, wash me, wash me, wash me. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, let your blood wash me, wash me, wash me, wash me. Zatali broko ye boko shatalabra. Aha. Say, let your blood cleanse me from every unrighteousness in the name of Jesus. Say, in the name of Jesus, I raise the blood of Jesus against every satanic agenda in my life in the name of jesus pray 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 against every satanic litigation concerning my life in the name of jesus i raise the blood of jesus every satanic litigation do you know what a litigation is in the kingdom of darkness they can bring a case against you and in real life you begin to see problems every satanic litigation aha can you lift up your voice people and pray 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 in Jesus mighty name everyone repeat after me say I raise the blood of Jesus against evil summoning concerning my life I will not obey evil instructions pray 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 in the name of Jesus I raise the blood I raise the blood I raise the blood of Jesus aha pray 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 Hey, hey, in Jesus' mighty name, say, I raise the blood of Jesus against evil reports about my life, my family, my work. Somebody can bring up an evil report against your life, against your business, and nobody will come and ask you. Every evil report, 
in the name of Jesus. I raise the blood. Pray, 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 pray. Satali brogo jagata bagatala. Rebogo ye mogo sandala bragada. Aha. In Jesus' name. Say, I raise the blood of Jesus against evil broadcasters concerning my life in the name of Jesus, concerning my family, every contrary news I arrest by the blood of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. In Jesus' mighty name, say I raise the blood of Jesus against any satanic prophecy, against my life, against my ministry, against my marriage. In the name of Jesus, I raise the blood of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. In Jesus' mighty name, say I raise the blood of Jesus against any form of stagnation concerning my life and family. Stagnation, I raise the blood of Jesus against you. Raise that blood, raise the blood, raise the blood. Satali braka shata yaba. Nele broko shata ta 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 ta. Rege boko shandala raraba. Maka satale broko de boko shantalaba. In Jesus' mighty name, say I raise the blood of Jesus against any form of barrenness in my life. It may be spiritual barrenness, financial barrenness. Raise the blood, 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 raise the blood. Maka sata, pray, 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 pray. Satali broko ye moko shata. Nare broko li baka sata. Raise the blood of Jesus. Raise the blood, raise the blood, raise the blood, raise the blood. Zatali broko shata gagala. Rebogo ye boko rebogo sata. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Can you give me Ezra 8.22? For I was ashamed to request the king an escort of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy on the road. Is there any woman here? Every enemy on the road of my children. The enemy may not show up now. It may be something that the enemy will cook. As they are progressing, it may be in the university. Every enemy on the road of my marriage. Every enemy on the road of my life. Pray to raise the blood of Jesus against you. Every enemy on my road in life. There is an enemy on the road. Hey! Every enemy on the road of my life. On the road of my marriage. Oh, raise the blood of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Sila la 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 bra. Shende gale. Raba baba 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 waka shanda gaya. Pray, 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 pray. Masi da la baga ya baga. Robo go ye bo go di bra. Rima kasanda. Aha. Mari bro go shetele bro. Thank you, Father. In Jesus mighty name we pray Isaiah 22 verse 25 Isaiah 22 verse 25 Isaiah 22 25 in that day says the Lord of hosts the peg that is fastened in the secure place will be removed be cut down and fall and the body that was on it will be cut off it is not my father that said it it is not my husband who said it in the last two years in my estate, three people who have been barren for many years had children. The first one had a child after maybe she's well over 45. She had a child. Another one after eight years. Then the third one had triplets. She's a member of Redeemed Christian Church of God. After 13 years, the peg that is fastened in the secured place shall be taken over. It shall be cut off. It's going to fall. The burden on it, the shame that you are suffering because of that area of your life. There may be a reproach. You may be rich, but there is a certain thing that is not okay that you're struggling with. Lift up your voice. Say, I raise the blood of Jesus. Any form of stagnation in any area of my life, right now, in the name of Jesus, be removed. Be cut down. Four, four, in the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Ra sa ta 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 ta. 
Reboko Yaga Sata. Pre, 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 pre. Maka Sata Laba. Maka Sata Laba. Maka Sata Laba. Maka Sata Laba. Pre, 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 pre. Raise the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. One of the things the voice of the shepherd does is to give you clarity. Right now, I'm going to invite the last call. If you're here and you seem to be moving from place to place, yet you don't have solution. Meaning, you're just wondering without result. As a matter of fact, spiritually you have a sign. A dream is a sign. In the dream, sometimes you have a semblance of what is happening, yet you don't understand it. When the king had a dream and saw three fat, uh, seven fat cows and seven lean cows, he didn't say he was watching National Geographic. It was not that he was watching a TV. God was showing the king something is about to happen. A dream is a spiritual signal. And that's the last one we're going to deal with. Because 1 Corinthians 12, 12, he says there are apostolic signs. That is a grace that has come to this house and we can't live without that. You are here. You keep seeing yourself wondering, wondering. It could be that you are dreaming. You see yourself wondering. You do difficult exams. You see yourself falling from a great height. You see yourself eating and once you do that in the physical, nothing good happens. Maybe you don't believe such things but yet you don't know what is wrong with you. You are here. You know something is wrong with you but you don't know what. <laughs> you yourself, you know. If you are here, you have been struggling with some issues. Failure at the edge of success. You need to step out as I'm calling these cases. You need to step out. If you're here, you have been believing God for a life partner, yet you dream and you see yourself getting married. You are not imagining, no. Uh -huh. And that is not, you say you, a white man is coming to marry you from America. For where? That's an attack. You need to come out quickly, quickly. Let's deal with those things. The Bible says in Isaiah 10, 27, it says in that day, it says the burden on your shoulder shall be taken away and the yoke destroyed. Principles cannot do some things. It's got to take the anointing. Principles cannot solve some problems. If you are here, you see yourself pregnant in the dream, but in the physical, no child. Come out. The anointing of God is here to deliver you. Some things in your life, they can't detect in the hospital. <laughs> it's God to take the Holy Ghost. I'm not the one doing it. It's the anointing. My responsibility is to call you. Hebrews 4 verse 12. Come boldly to the throne of grace. A Daughters of Destiny. We want every woman to know that help is always available. We are here to offer godly and practical counsel for various issues peculiar to you as a woman. Contact us today via our counseling hotlines 0708-307-6210 and 0909-328-8336. You will overcome. You are a daughter of destiny. Daughters of Destiny.